Hey everybody, happynaturalhorse.com. I just wanted to let you know about this um, inquiry. I've been cleaning out my closet, and this is probably one of the most important videos and reference that I can find on horse minerals that makes really good common sense. So if you're really interested in balancing your horse's mineral buffet, this is a 1982 article from the inquiry, and it is amazing. Back then we used a lot of uh, big words and small print. <laughs> So, hopefully I can get through it and show you the um, importance of this article. Um, a horse without minerals is like building uh, beams, an engine without spark, a uh, building a building without beams, building an engine without spark plugs, a water pump, and without pressure. A horse without minerals cannot function. At the same time, horses have to be taken... In, at the same time, a horse who has taken too much of one mineral or consistently relies on an imbalanced portion in his feed and water is like a 110 volt or electric motor plugged into a 222 outlet, 222 outlet. So some of the parts of the system go haywire in the mineral nutrition and it walks a path narrow in a few spots, generally wide in others, between thorns on one side and abyss and the deficiency in others. Okay, so getting to the root of the mineral deficiency, as many as 40 minerals, earthly organs may have found their way to your horse's system. About 20 of them are essential to their well-being. Four are non-essential and damaging, and the rest remain categorized because the roles aren't yet clear. Since minerals make up only a pinch of the complete recipe for the horse's body, even the beneficial ones are harmful when the horse consumes large enough quantities um, let's see, over a long period of time, and then they will see, you will see um, health issues with your horses. The ultimate the ultimate minerals is the earth. And a horse as ordinarily gets most of his portions of minerals from the grass, from the hay, some grain, water that has already been picked through the portions of the soils. Thus, mineral deficiencies and excess diets of grazing animals can usually be blamed on the same shortages and surpluses found in the oil soils beneath their rambling feet. Mineral imbalances in stabled horses may trace back to the soil two farms up the road or half the continent away, depending on where the hay and grain comes from. So, mineral availability in your horse's refuge and grain depends upon the natural quality of the soil which um, it grows, the geographical uh, location. And now, what is important in my how to identify and release your horse's pain points in there, there's a page um, in the index file where you can go to your geographical region and find where your horses, um, where your mineral beds are from the United States um, data. So that's a very good website to go to. Um, growing season with ideal plants take bounty minerals, bounties, bounteous mineral supplies with drought and leaves are stunted. Okay. The age and the condition of roughage, bleach, flooded, over ravaged get grass and hay contain smaller amounts of major minerals that can be held up in their heyday. Okay. So not all deficiency problems can be traced to earth. Sometimes they arise from within the animal. Your horse is just a nutrient unique nutrient nutrient extractor and as he is in appearance. So there will be various among individual herds. So I'm going to go to the next slide. Okay. And this one will show that goiters. Now goiter happens to horses when the dam during pregnancy um, is over supplemented with iodine and will cause this condition. Okay. So an animal with minerals of each other takes on a ration. In addition, if your horse is sick or sharing his feed with parasites, his mineral needs will be higher. If your horse is young, carrying nursing full or stressed by hard work or upsetting circumstances, his body 
will more subject mineral related problems. So everything gets traced back to the minerals. That's why the big sky is so important because the big sky is a natural mined mineral from the earth and it's 100% non GMO, 100% absorbable and naturally mined straight from the earth. It's nothing synthetic in its, um, in its product at all. There's absolutely no synthetic minerals in the big sky minerals, whereas other places do have synthetic minerals put in there. They just add them in. Okay. So, and let's see, this one say electrolytes loose, electrolyte like less, salt, potassium, and magnesium are the main minerals that escape. They, they escape quickly out of the body system. Um, when there's heavy sweating, sweating, diarrhea, and electrolytes will, electrolytes will flush the body. So, um, a salt lock in a horse's animal ration usually restocks its supply, except in extreme losses. Okay, now this is a big head horse here. Okay, and it says big head, puffy appearance in the horse's face is caused by an incomplete development of the bone skull. Um, and that is from containing more phosphorus than calcium triggered by a faulty bone growth. Okay, so all of livestock horses are least affected by dietary mineral imbalances due to any intake superiority superiority simply because they are not bred or stressed to push to maximum milk, meat, egg production. For instance, grass so deficient in magnesium or cobalt that it likely will kill cattle, affects, rarely affects grazing horses. And sudden intake of calcium imbalance is um, can cause lethal milk fever in dietary cows who have just been calved and never never threaten lactating males. Yet, some of the equine body natural, not normally maintains nutrient balance by adjusting the rate at which it absorbs the minerals to the level of the diet. Okay? This is really, so it's a very important. Your horse can tolerate mineral mistakes and tends to narrow path in the following four era, areas. Calcium and phosphorus balance between the horse two bone builders. Those are very, very important. Okay. Sometimes nature soil composition is to blame. Sometimes the menu mixing is fault. Um, because we are our horse's worst enemy when it comes to feeding. For the horse's needs, the ideal ratio between two and interactive minerals is one and a half parts calcium to one part phosphorus. Several trace mineral, copy mag copper, magnesium fluoride, also influence the horse's ability to use two major minerals. When the entire group is present in the har harmonious amount of diet, the bones grow strong straight as the horse inheritance permits. When the calcium phosphorus ratio in full feed stays about 3.1 or even more devastating to bone development, when the phosphorus level exceeds the calcium level for weeks at a time, and now I'm going to go here and hopefully, um, it will go back to where I need it to go back to. Um, okay, that's the end. So, so I'm going to go to view all four folders to see if I can get this back. Nope. That's the wrong one. So just bear with me. I'm going to X that one out. Alright. Okay, so, you know, we can see I don't know why it won't go back. So now i got to go find it back in here. It's a pain in the butt. Okay, let's go. Okay, so this is the next slide. If it opens. I'm going to get it to open. <laughs> so, um, bear with me. Okay, so. Okay, I'm going to go up here. And this is hard to read because of the, um, the print 
in the aquarium. It's very small, but it's tons of information. The potassium is well supplied by the Maryland forage and adequate in the Colorado grasses, while magnesium is adequate for Maryland horses and only marginal for Colorado grazers. But superiority of the bluegrass as the horse feed is not absolute. This sample taken in July reflects higher mineral content and young growing grass, whereas buffalo grass collected in dry late October shows typical shortage of phosphorus that occurs in age drought um, forage. So the phosphorus, um, if it's imbalanced, um, these it may, it's it's made for building the bone and the maintenance of the bone of the horse. So until the late 1950s, minerals had considered non-essential and poisonous. Oh, psyllium status. Until the late 90s, the mineral was considered non-essential and poisonous. Only recently have feed formulas been allowing to add psyllium to the ration, but supplementing with vitamin E, long, long accepted as an additive but apparently help make it look, um, help take up the slack when psyllium levels were low. So, <clears throat> okay, so the remaining essential elements sound there, sound more like the ingredients of hardware and tools than digestible nutrients, but copper, cobalt, chromium and manganese, manganese, and then the nickel, silicon, sulfur, sulfur, and all that. Trace mineral salt offers many of these elements, though not, not largely enough quantities to make up the severe deficiency. But then again, severe deficiency never it shows up in the horses outside on a laboratory situation. Heavy metal po poisoning, uh, let's see, let me move this over here, can happen if they drink... Um, from streams contaminated by lead, mercury, arsenic, and candium. So these non-essential oils, um, these non-essential minerals are usually taken a little bit at a time and gradually built up to toxic levels in the body and has no way to clear them out. So that's the good news about the big sky. It will detox the bad minerals. It will grab it and throw it out the horse. So that's why you're safe with the big sky minerals because it won't allow a buildup. So um, let's see if I can get to the next slide. Yay, yay, it's letting me, yay. So hopefully I can make it bigger. So <clears throat> they've been adding fertilizer maximum where fluoride is a airborne byproduct. Lead poisoning can be treated, but once the other heavy metals and excess fluoride have been done their damage. It's irreversible. In general, pastures and path of past, a present mine run off, down, downwind from the foundry of smoked stacks and watered by industrial pollution. So, just as a sensible human diet isn't built around coffee, candy, soda, and chewing gum, okay, um, your horse's mineral nu nutrition is primarily a matter of daily management rather than the stopgap stop supplementation. For most owners, the pleasure horse or two common sense care feed selection of the horse for best appearance offers enough assurance that all is well. So when you grow your own feed on your land that you know is properly cared for, you have a pretty good, you know, bale of hay for long weather as long as the weather cooperates. But when you buy a bale of hay here and there, you don't know what kind of minerals you're getting for your horse. And general guidelines about hay and grain make your choices easier. So, um, and it talks about the, um, the hay here. And, you know, alfalfa is higher in calcium, I think. Yeah. Higher in ratio of calcium to phosphorus, so you have to be careful. While the appearance of lovely green grass hay may not absorb, absolutely guarantee a high mineral content, bleach, stemmy, musty hay will in belly contain lower levels of minerals. So it talks about here in the pasture. So that's why we use the Medina. We use the Medina 
to replenish the minerals into our soils, and I do it like almost every year, every other year. And that helps leach down below the surface of the the minerals, I mean the grass, and the, 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 the ground, and it digs deep into um, the soil and, and helps it grow. So this one is... Let's see, traditional Timothy Oats combination tends towards excess phosphorus, so you have to be careful there, while plain oats leans towards excess calcium. When alfalfa is the only one hitting the diet, shelled corn with high phosphorus content is a good counterbalance. Even though it's GMO, you got to do something to keep that phosphorus done because it can really wreak havoc on your horse. Um, mineral matters for all... Uh, um, performers and producers, okay? So, guesswork in feeding can be disastrous effects on the foal, crops, yearling sale, candidates, etc. To take the guesswork out of the business, you'll need to take stock of your herd's mineral inventory. Um, you could wait till a mineral, to a physical signs of mineral mistakes to show up into your horse, or you can have uh, laboratory testing, hair analysis, done, etc. Usually uh, you can get your soil tested at the Ag Center um, and do that. So um, let me see if I can get this down so I can see. Hmm. Uh, it's not going up. So you could do you know, laboratory testing on the urine, the blood, but hair analysis, they have a really good thing. But you really don't have to worry about it as long as you feed the big sky. So, um, and so this is the last part of the article. Um, mag there's only four of the 20 essential elements, magnesium, copper, zinc, and selenium that are um, important to your horse's diet too. And they absorb through trace amounts. So your management from maintaining well-bred pasture through quality control in the hay mow is doing is doling out the healthy balance at mealtime. You almost always clear up the mineral muddles that could affect your horse's health. Commercial mineral supplements when added to the ration at whim are the best unnecessary expense. Okay, so you're wasting your money. Nationally distributed products supply the same minerals to horses in Tampa and Tacoma, even though the soils and forages in those areas differ from mineral content. And there's a chance you might create a introverted excess, primarily of iodine and possibly psyllium. By adding the supplement, it's to an already adequate diet, so, you know, you got to be careful there. If you choose to, to feed commercial supplements, measure out the amount exact on the label tells you. And daily spoon fill uh, on each stuff is usually plenty. The body requirements for minerals in all cellular functions and skeletal structure leads back through vegetation to the Mother Earth. And reminder, perhaps of biblical handfuls of dust that supplied the foundation for man and beast. While your horse's may, system may forgive errors in the mineral nutrition, uh, that would be another species over the brink into the thorns. His body will pay for, this, for the stray too far off the path. So it's important to keep your minerals in balance. And that's what the Big Sky Minerals does. Okay? I hope you like this um, YouTube. I'm sorry that if it was, you know, collaborated, but it was really hard for me to get the the PDF together and the slides together. I did the best I could, but it was really hard. So I thought it was a really good article. Uh, explains a lot. You could read through it by blowing. I don't think you can blow it up on your screen, but I did the best I could. So um, it's a great article. You could probably get past issues um, of the inquiry. I have a lot of them, and it's they're just packed full of information. So share this video. Like it. Comment on it. Subscribe to my channel, share it with people, and leave a comment and let me know if this has helped you in any way making a decision. Again, happynaturalhorse.com. Like me on Facebook at Natural Equine Remedies. Okay, bye.